Igor's right arm is missing. His legs are stunted. Igor is now eight. He was born in Belarus during the aftermath of the Chernobyl catastrophe. He's living in Surrey with foster parents. When we first met Igor, he was living in number one children's hospital in Minsk, and his mother had lived in a village very near and was very ill with radiation sickness herself. She was absolutely horrified when Igor was born, so had left him at the hospital. Igor has spent his whole life in institutions, and his future is full of uncertainty. He's here in Britain for the fitting of artificial limbs, his deformities caused by the world's worst nuclear disaster. Nine years on, the effects of the deadly and invisible cloud still taint town and country. People didn't believe it. They didn't believe how serious it might be. People still suffer from all the Chernobyl consequences and especially children. And the most terrible thing, I think, that is uh, that nobody knows what happens to our children or to our people in the nearest future. The immediate area around Chernobyl was cleared but the lethal radioactive footprint was no respecter of boundaries. It bled across the Ukraine, into Belarus, and as far as Sweden, carried on the wind, in the water, and in the food chain. A lot of people spend a lot of time outside, just in the open air, with uncovered heads. And of course, no official information about that. We were told nothing about that. Some died immediately. Thousands are condemned to a lingering death. The genetic legacy of Chernobyl is a million deformed children. These children bore the brunt of the disaster. Downs, spina bifida, cerebral palsy, the awful requiem of genetic abnormality is commonplace in these wards. But the radioactive isotopes delivered new mutations of deformity, syndromes previously unknown here. Igor was among the first child victims of Chernobyl. Abandoned by his parents, he grew up in the state orphanage in Minsk. Among these tiny, ravaged and misshapen orphans, there was something special about Igor. His living, lively intelligence endeared him to all the staff, and particularly to Dr. Tamara Marasheva. У нас воспитываются дети умственно неполноценные, больные. И Игорь среди на их фоне очень сильно выделялся. Это был любимец персонала, было и есть, потому что с ним можно было получить от души. Мы с ним общались, когда укладывали других детей спать. Он разговаривал, рассказывал о своей жизни и о своих мечтах, особенно когда он подрос. Игорь had an impossible dream to be like other children with two arms and normal legs. The fate of the Chernobyl children is too awful to contemplate. If they survive premature birth, they must by law be sent to mental asylums at the age of four, whether they are mentally handicapped or not. Igor too should have been sent to an asylum despite his obvious intelligence. But because of his size, the orphanage managed to hide his age from the authorities. The Russian media was involved to help publicize his plight. People from abroad came and made promises. But it was an English charity, the Chernobyl Children Lifeline, who threw the only lifeline that would save Igor. 
it sent him an invitation to come to Britain and be fitted with artificial limbs. On the 4th of January, 1994, Igor arrived in London, ready to face the challenge of a new country and a new language. When I first met Igor in October and agreed that I would give him a home while he had the treatment, it was initially for six months to just have an arm fitted. Then when we went up to Roehampton, um, they were so impressed by his courage and his, the fact that he was very mentally alert and they saw a spark in him, so they decided to do his legs, which then meant we had to get an extension on his visa for at least 18 months. While he's in England, Igor is a ward of court, but still a citizen of the new Republic of Belarus, which will ultimately decide his future when his course of treatment is completed. Igor is an outpatient at Queen Mary's Hospital, Roehampton, one of the leading hospitals in the design and fitting of artificial limbs. He's been living for the moment when he too will have normal limbs whatever difficulty that might entail to himself and to his prosthetist, Alan Stevenson. That's a good fitting cap, so... To enable Alan Stevenson to assess the right length for the new arm, he must first decide on the height of the boots to be sure Igor can cope with them. Маленькими шажками, маленькими шажками. Ставь ножку ровно. Правильно, правильно. Так, Игорь, поторопился немножечко, не торопился. Good. Good. Can you do one more for me? Here you go. Good boy. February 1994. Straight the way through to the post office. Go get in the queue for some snacks. Igor has been away from Belarus for just one month and is already mastering the English language and the way of life. Up to the counter. Up to the lady. Say hello. 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 How are you? How are you? So you can have 49. 49. First class. Stamps. Stamps. Please. 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 He's been told a little about the nuclear explosion, but how much he really understands, I don't know. Um, what I've planned to do with him is what we do with other foster children. They have a life story book, so obviously the first things in his um, book will be the pictures of the hospital in Minsk and also we'll bring the disaster and photos that we've got so that we can really give him his life story as he grows up. March, Igor's seventh birthday and his first in England. We've now found that Igor's never had a birthday or certainly not a party. So one of the children that speaks Russian um, told him about it, but he couldn't really understand. So we spent all of about an hour before he went to bed talking. And I told him that he was six, but when he woke up in the morning, he would be seven. And it would be a special day for him. So I think, in a sense, he's probably more aware now that he's different and handicapped to what he was before he came to England. But it doesn't worry him. I mean, he's, we, 
if he makes any mention of his arm or his feet, we just talk as much as we can about it, and he just forgets it till next time, sort of thing. Let's see what's in here first, then. Come on, watch, watch. Yeah. Oh. <gasps> what's that? Oh, look! He's told me he wants to be a fireman when he grows up, and at the moment that's, that's his dream, and it doesn't matter how you talk about it or you say you've got little legs or you haven't got an arm, like he said, well, I don't need two arms, I'm not going to be a driver, I'm going to sit in the back. So he's already putting his role into proportion that he won't be the big fireman that's going to drive the engine and battle on. Um, but he's, it's there. But time will tell how he'll cope with not being able to be a fireman. <laughs> Eris are clever now. Right. Now hold on to there. Right, now you've got to come up here. Bring your legs. No, I'm not up here. No. Right, now what are you going to do? You've got to walk on this one. Right. And Hello. Then this one. News of the catastrophe at Chernobyl emerged gradually. But evacuation of the area around the stricken reactor had been painfully slow, as was the issue of safety instructions. For the towns and cities further afield, like Minsk, it was as if there had been no disaster. On the news, there was barely a mention. I think it was just the policy of our government to keep everything in secret. But as a, just an ordinary person, I know that a lot of people, even my very close friend, friends, die of cancer, from cancer, but no body connected it or their diseases with the Chernobyl catastrophe. And our doctors were not allowed even to talk about that, not even to link some very serious diseases as cancer is with the Chernobyl catastrophe consequences. Seven years after the explosion, a sample survey of 500 children in Minsk showed that only one was found to be completely healthy. Dr. Tamara Marasheva, who had cared for Igor, watched helplessly as her own son sickened under the onslaught of the invisible enemy. Ували второго доктора, у нее обои детей щитовидка There is no consolation for this suffering population and no means to ease its pain. A simple packet of aspirins costs half an average monthly salary and vitamin pills, even if they were obtainable, would be financially beyond the reach of ordinary people. There can be no convalescence when sick people are fed a poor diet of food grown on land contaminated by nuclear fallout. It's three months since Igor came to England. He's at Queen Mary's Roehampton again to try his boots. The harsh reality of adapting his little body to the artificial limbs is proving to be more difficult than he imagined. 
In his own mind, he had expected real limbs. This, it's hoped, will be the final fitting. Should we just try and put the hooks alone at that height? What does he feel about it? Have you? <coughs> <coughs> well, normally when he comes back from a visit, he's quite excited and he speaks about it. Although this morning, when he knew we were coming, he was reluctant, and I didn't make. Uh, too much, but when we turned in the gate, he really said, oh, no, no. Once again. Um, but yes. also, I mean, bless him, he thinks he's going to bring them home, you know, and it, it's very difficult to make him understand that you, you've got to get them just ready. right, yes. that he can't, they're not like a pair of shoes, they're special. Mm -hmm. When I saw the boots, I was a bit horrified, really. I thought, oh, what are they going to do to him? But once he'd got them on and he moved, I, I just couldn't really believe that he was actually moving. And then when he took his arm off the bar and did it on his own, I mean, it was, it was just beautiful. I mean, you sort of burst. I felt like sort of running over and grabbing him. But Igor's excitement did not last. The boots remained for further alterations. We've got very close. For a little while, he was getting too clingy, too independent of me, so I've had to sort of put him out into the extended family a bit. But when you meet Igor, you just can't help the bond. I don't. I can't think anybody wouldn't bond with Igor. There's just something about him. He's such a pleasure. Look at this. Oh, it's police. Look. Blossom. Igor, smell it. Is it nice? Ah, yeah. Nice. Look. Every year in May, the Bennets go on holiday to Spain. This year, Igor is to go with them. Water. The first time I took him back to the airport was to collect a group of children. And he was, I didn't tell him where we were going because I wanted to get his reactions about the airport so that we could talk about the holiday. But when you go to the bar, what will you ask him for? No. 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 What will you ask him for a drink of? Drink. Barbara will have orange. What will Igor and Roy have? Wait, Igor, vodka. Vodka, yeah. As you got nearer, he saw the planes taking off. That was fine. He didn't mind them at ground level. But as soon as we turned into the car park, he really panicked then. He was really worried that I was sending him back. He, cause he'd been naughtier earlier on than today. He kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, don't send me to Minx. With the last remaining passengers travelled to Dalaman with Caledonia Elkhorn, Mr. Pike's Because that's got to have a suitcase. Yeah. 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 
Obviously, you're going to give the man all the passports and your glasses. Come on in. Thank you very much. Yeah, you can manage. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, because he can manage the stairs both down and across the uh, tarmac. Thanks very much. Okay. Away we go. Lovely. The only previous time Igor flew was when he left Minsk for London. Airports remind him of a time he would rather forget. Igor has placed his trust in Barbara. He's become part of the family. But his future is still filled with uncertainty. Igor knows he doesn't want to return to Belarus. What he doesn't realize is, if he does, it would be to a Russian mental asylum. Igor has been in England for seven months. Wearing the specially designed boots with the five-inch platforms, he's back at Queen Mary's Hospital in July for a very important stage in his long journey towards self-sufficiency. Open. This is the final fitting for Igor's right arm. It'll take some getting used to. Igor controls the battery-operated arm with his shoulder movements. Okay, so you do it again. Open. Good. Good. Open. Good. But to turn the wrist of his new right arm, Igor has to use his left hand. If you are going to be good, <laughs> hey, do you want to take it home, dear? Yes. What would you do with it? What are you going to do with it when you get it home? Yeah. What are you going to do with your new arm when you get it home? Cut the sausages. Say it louder, the doctor didn't hear. Cut the sausages. Cut your sausages. <laughs> He, he says he wants his legs so he can drive a fast car and the police won't catch him. And he also wants his arm um, so he can wash himself easier and also so he can put some of his toys on a bigger shelf so the other children can't get them. The fittings are an ongoing process and there will be further assessments. Time alone will tell how Igor will cope. A world away, Minsk. They rehouse the families from the danger zones in a concrete suburbia. Larissa Nekai and her family, like many others, had to wait five years in the contaminated countryside for their space in a tower block on the edge of town. Their children are just back from England, a trip arranged by the charities who helped Igor. This lovingly arranged litter, this waste paper, are the children's mementos of their month away. When we knew that our children were going to Anglia, we were very happy that they were going to Anglia. 
Мы благодарны фонду 26 апреля, что наши дети туда поехали. Когда приехали наши дети, а мы их дети. просто не могли узнать. Потому что они приехали свежие, красивые, я не могу говорить. Настроение не приехали, радостные, счастливые. Точка три дня плакала, кричит, отвезите меня назад. Мне было там очень хорошо, они такого тут не видят вообще никогда. И не увидят. Я не могу, Калина Дмитриевна. Не озеро. Both children have since developed thyroid problems. They are part of an ongoing program. Every year, the Chernobyl Children Lifeline brings about 700 children over to England from the worst polluted areas of Belarus. All these children have lost their parents through death or desertion. Many will never reach adulthood. But it is believed that even a month eating the right food, away from radioactive contamination, will boost the immune system. I don't think that they realize how dangerous it was and how dangerous it may be or it might be for them because they are too small, too little for that. But there is another problem because when they see how different the life can be just in other countries abroad in Great Britain, some of them can't understand why we live such a life here in Belarus. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, here, Captain. Welcome aboard. Now also on behalf of the cockpit crew, and a special welcome to all those children out of uh, Belarusia on their way to Great Britain. Our takeoff in about two minutes. Thank you. It's a day of wonderment, of new impressions. These children have had nothing. They expect so little. The children arrive at Heathrow. Barbara is there to greet them, but not Igor. The comings and goings to Russia are too poignant a reminder to him that one day he too might have to go back. You had a good journey? Meanwhile, the chairman of the charity, Victor Mitzi, welcomes the group. Welcome. Are the children all tired? Yeah, they will be. It seems to me that they're not. They're not. They're well tired. They were so excited. All oh, right. right. Can I help them speak English? No. No, no. no. And Barbara has also got Igor, the boy we brought here for an arm. She looks up. He's yeah. tired. He's very he's tired. He's tired. First of all, they need vitamins and some. Yeah. Where's your Where's your bag? Where's your bag over there. Your bag. Your luggage. Так растет, ну так растет, интересно. It's been a long day, and it's not over yet. There is still a night drive to Shrewsbury, where they'll be staying. The children are living on their nervous energy. The excitement of a memorable day on the threshold of a never-to-be-forgotten month. Bye. When the children are here, we make sure that they get medical checkups or and dental treatment. One of the things that we have found is that teeth are in a terrible state. They're very brave. They go to the dentist, they have their teeth out, and they don't complain of anything. And when you want to give them a codeine or an aspirin or any painkiller, they don't want to take them because they say they're far too expensive. The time passes incredibly quickly. Just before the children are due to return to Belarus, the host families throw a party for them. Lena, the elder one, gave us a letter when she arrived. <clears throat> Dear English friends, we, the Matsukoviches, Mikhail and Valentina, want to express our great thank you for your wish to take care of our daughter. We are very touched by the fact that there are people living in England who are not indifferent to the fates of people who are in trouble, and they are ready to help us. Thanks a lot again. 
Best wishes from the, best wishes from the Matsukoviches. You know, I wasn't aware of the, uh, the terrible things that go on out there and how the children are and how it's affecting them in their day-to-day -day life now. He hasn't told us a lot. I mean, he's told us that there isn't much... He hasn't had much food. Oh. He was telling us about one time when his grandmother was ill and they had to buy some tablets. He only had two potatoes to last them all weekend between all of them. But he hasn't told us a lot. He's quite shy about things. Do you want to go back? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a few tears, haven't we? Plage. <laughs> prepared a big parcel. He only came over with one pair of trousers, one shirt, one pair of underpants and a present of six tomatoes and that was all he had, nothing else. And he's gone back with bags and bags of clothes. People have been so kind what they've given him. All the community round us, the street, we've had flooded with gifts of clothes and shoes and sweets and food and everything. Everybody's been so kind. Uh, it's, it's very hard not to cry. And these people, you know, that's, I, feel, I feel very humble, really, you know, because they're such a proud people, and uh, they're desperately in need. Igor did come to the party, but reluctantly. If I tell him that I'm going to meet um, different children, he can rebel and refuse to go, so now it's just we're going out for the day, somewhere special, um, and then he sort of slots in, and once you're there, he's happy enough apart from speaking Russian. I think deep down we haven't got over to him the fear that he won't be sent back. The arm isn't what Igor expected. He says it's hard and it's heavy, which it is. It's just over three pound in weight, so it's an awful weight for a little boy to carry on his shoulders. Yeah, I have. If he doesn't want to wear it, then we don't make him wear it. And today is what we call a play day. We try to give him something on Monday to Friday, but give him a break at the weekends. And also, when we're out and about, nobody seems to comment as he is. But as soon as he's got his boots or his arm, you get, oh, poor thing, oh, what a shame. And he's also picking this up, so he just wants to be a happy little boy when he's out. The legs that he's got, unfortunately, his right foot, the toe, is beginning to grow and it's growing very quick. So the boots he's got are too small. So we're having some new ones made. And also we found that although he was quite mobile with them, five inches is too high. So they're now dropping it down to three inches, which hopefully will make him more mobile with them on. And then gradually the height will be built up. <coughs> Look at that. One is got big, and that little one. That's all, all off. That is all white, because one just broken. Because I did one, two, three. And I did one, two, three, four, five, six. I have a six. I did have it one, two, three. Four, five, six. Because cause one's broken and that. And that. It's not dead broken, it's not here. So somewhere it's a mix of water. Well, the tests that Roehampton have done, they feel that from the waist up that he, he should be like any other normal child. There's no reason at all that even with the radiation he's been exposed to, they don't feel that anything will deteriorate but they can't give us the same guarantee from the waist down. No, that's me. 
most nightclubs go to numbs. With a child's intuition, Igor perhaps has an instinct for what may lie ahead. Somebody told me, a big man told me, police told me, say, when you big boy, and they say, you'll die. September, the start of a new academic year. Although he is now seven, this will be Igor's first day at school. Igor, hi. Then come and get ready for school. Come on. Right. Come on. Ready. Steady. Whee! Come on. Oh, big stretch. Oi! What do you mean? Hey? Leave you? I can't leave you, you've got to go to school. What do you want your fire engine for? For clean tea. Can't go. I think I've got to be safe there. Right, come on, boy. Oh, 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 that's cat. Right. What is it? Yeah. You're supposed to use yeah. this. Look, do it properly. Okay, liquid. Yeah. I, G. Igor already knows his letters. As the time approaches when they must leave for school, right. he say? dictates to Barbara a remarkable right. message of love. Right. Can we put it up here for the rest of the day? Barbara, let your name, your name here, long here. No, because it'll spoil it if I put my name on it. How do you make no this? No, well. What do you want me to do? What, Barbara? Yes. What do you want Barbara on there? Because who said Barbara to me? Barbara. Barbara, how do you say love? Love? <laughs> Igor, we haven't got time for all this. Right, school. If the teacher says, what's your name, what are you going to say? I said... My name is... Igor. Yeah, but you have to say my name. My name is Igor. Igor. And then how old are you, Igor? Seven. That's right. To actually turn it over and write his name and then get me to write Barbara and love, and then ask for kisses. That's the first time he's ever done that. So whether he just wanted to leave that behind as a bit of security. Uh, occasionally, if he's going somewhere different and I'm not going, he will sort of check that I'm going to be here when he comes back. But he's never done anything like this before. Barbara, carry it. Good go. Right, in the playground. Across the playground, look, come on, because you're late. Yeah. It's not good to be late on your first day, is it? Yeah? Over here, look. Hold my hand. Come on. What are you looking so worried about? Igor is being collected after school. It's an anxious time for Barbara until the taxi pulls up outside the house. The trouble is I don't know who it is. All I know is it's KT exclusive cars. What did you draw? A light, a man, and a, and a bird in the water. Oh, that's good. You don't. You didn't draw a fire engine? No, no. You're saying no. Well, we've got lots of fire engines, haven't we? It's a very nice to have a different picture, isn't it? Yeah. What else did you play? Did you do some sums? Okay. Did you have to add up? Yeah? Yeah. And did you do some writing? Yeah. What sort of writing? Did you write your name? I did. You did? 
What did your teacher say? Okay. Did you say, well done? Yeah. What else did you do? When he saw the name tabs with two names, he wanted to know who they were and said that wasn't that wasn't his name. And I said, but because you've come from Russia, you've got a Russian name and that's what it is. But his answer is he's living with us and he doesn't need Russian. We don't yeah. need Russian, so he doesn't need Russian. Yeah. Yes. Although Chernobyl is in the Ukraine, the neighboring state of Belarus suffered from the fallout just as badly. A quarter of the land is still tainted, affecting two million people. From the polluted soil, adulterated food is sold in local markets, passing through the food chain into the human body despite health checks carried out by the state. The radiation emitted from Chernobyl was a hundred times greater than that at Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and it lives on nine years later, blighting a whole generation of children. If we expect an increase of maybe lymphomas and leukemias, firstly, maybe, maybe having Japanese uh, Japanese uh, experiences after nuclear bombing Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But unexpectedly, we have catastrophically tremendous in increase of thyroid gland cancer. The most basic painkillers and anti-nausea serums are virtually non-existent. The children literally suffer as the incidence of thyroid cancer mounts unchecked. These children are dying. In the cancer wards, there is a feeling of utter despair, as if the world had turned its back. England, December. Christmas time. Christmas time. Christmas time. Christmas time. Christmas time. Do, 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 do. The one morning he should have been up early and he was late up and I couldn't stay in bed and wait so I got up first. Then the next thing, I said to Roy, when he wakes up, just bang on the floor and I'll know he's coming down and I'll be ready for him. And the next thing I know there's a little voice saying, wow, is this Christmas in England? What, this one? Yeah. Whoa. What about that big one? Now wait and come out then. That's nice. Like it? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Which bits looks best? All of. All of it? Yeah. Did you have one like that in mince? No. What did you have in mince? Any light. What, just a tree with lights? Yeah. No decorations? No. Uh, but Father Christmas came. Do you think Father Christmas will be better in England? Why's that? Because he loves all people. Because he loves all the people? Well, then I will be getting some presents. Up to now, Igor had called his foster mother Barbara. On Christmas Day, all that changed. Mummy! 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 Look at that, this is you! We'll go downstairs and then I'll have a look. Watch you don't fall on the stairs. Are you drawing a picture of me? Yeah, nice one. A nice one? I'm yeah. not glad about that. It's really good. 
It's good for you. It's good you know what. Say, say, it's my me. Is it? Yeah. That's the first time you've drawn a picture of me, isn't it? Put it on the sofa then. Let's have a look. A scribble oh, one. A scribble one. Well, I haven't got green hair. <laughs> I feel is important for him to keep his own language and it's something that he's really refusing to do. Although we have swapped words, he'll tell me what it is in Russian and I'll tell him in English. And every time at the end of the conversation you get, but I'm not going back to Minsk. I'm English now. So I think the bond between us has grown. And certainly from my point of view, he's really my little boy in lots and lots of ways. But I'm also beginning to realise that this is what he's thinking. And even if I said to myself every morning when I woke up, he's not yours, he's borrowed, you can't love him. All the logical things just go out of the window. It's impossible. There are children that you can care for, you can clothe and feed and give them daily care. Igor's not one of these. This monument, which stands unfinished in a park in Minsk, is the only official acknowledgement of the ongoing tragedy of Chernobyl. I worry what his adult future is going to be, because obviously, you know, there is a chance that we won't be around, um, because we're, we're not a young couple, so you do worry what his future's going to be. See, we don't know if the legs are going to work. We don't know how high we can make him, how much height we can give him. We don't know whether the top half of his body, which is definitely growing in the bottom, isn't, whether the bottom's going to take the weight of the top. It could well be that he will finish up in a wheelchair, and I think for a little boy as active as him, he'll be devastated. Deep down, I think we'll always be worried because he, he isn't ours. Um, Igor's special in the fact that he's got nobody. So we just hope and pray that nobody will take him away. At least for the present, Igor has a future. As much cannot be said for the other children left behind with nobody. Nothing. The story of Igor's continuing struggle to come to terms with Chernobyl's cruel legacy and the ghost of his past is highlighted in Network First next Tuesday in Egypt.